All right. Well, hello, everybody. I am James Breckenridge, and uh, for my project, I had decided to give my presentation in the style of a somewhat informal video blog. Um, this way, I can just kind of make it a conversation and kind of talk through my process for this paper, for this project, and then, of course, what I'm doing with my training session. So a little bit of background. Um, I am a trainer for Wellmark, Inc. So Wellmark is the largest Blue Cross and Blue Shield insurance provider in the Midwest, so we cover Iowa and South Dakota. So I am part of the medical management team. So the folks that I train are mainly clinical staff, so they're all nurses um, from a wide array of backgrounds. I have some that have just done behavioral health, some of that have been in the ER, um, some have done home care, family practice, you name it, it's probably represented with our staff, so it's pretty cool. So to give a little history about what their process is at Wellmark, um, they are supposed to be doing medical necessity review. So for example, you go to your doctor and he says you need to have an MRI. Well, that request will get submitted electronically to the nurses in medical management, and they will read through the clinical documentation, look at your medical history, and they will help determine is an MRI the right course of action, or should you have a CAT scan first, or maybe another test first? So ultimately that decides if insurance is going to pay that claim, or if we deny it, then there's going to be a different course of action. So that's a little background of the participants that I'm going to have. So what I am focusing on is andragogy in the setting for um, my, my clinical team. What's happening in our world is mid nah, midsummer next year we are getting brand new software that is really going to change how we do our business i mean not only just the buttons that we click and the documents that we look at but everybody's job role is going to change so we have about five or six different teams right now those are going to be consolidated reshuffled to we'll probably land at about two maybe three teams um, that last one being pretty small so the purpose of this session is to help kind of introduce change management, um, but while using some personality metrics to kind of bring it all together, which honestly does provide a little bit of a challenge. So I'm going to be using the Myers-Briggs type indicator, and I'm also going to be using Standout um, as kind of tools to help kind of format this class. So Myers-Briggs and Standout, these are a couple different personality metrics. And the reason I'm using those is, well, I was told I had to. Um, I have a lot of freedom with my training, um, but Wellmark has made a very big investment into these two programs. Um, so I've been told that I need to incorporate that as much as possible into this session. So as I've been going through doing my research for this project, um, I have found that Andragogy get, gets used a lot in a clinical setting. So it actually provides a really good framework not only for this session, but for all of my future sessions I'm going to have as well. So this one's kind of the kickoff, but a lot of these principles will be used for sessions going forward for the next, honestly, for the next few years. So there are six main kind of principles of andragogy. Um, I'm going to focus on the three that I think are most applicable for my scenario. And that is going to be experience, orientation to learning, and then the need to know. So let's talk about experience first. Anybody um, that's on the medical management team does have a clinical background. So wherever they have worked, um, they bring in all that knowledge, all that background, and now get to apply it in a little bit different fashion for an insurance company. So not only is it important for each one to rely on their own experience and how that impacts decisions today, um, but also so they can bounce ideas off of each other. So if somebody has a request for something that's maybe not their specialty, they can bounce ideas off one of the other nurses. And so they can kind of share and um, kind of compare their experiences. So everybody kind of learns together. So I'm really going to do my best to bring those experiences into this training so everybody can kind of learn from the same core information. The next one with orientation to learning is really, I'm taking it to focus on problem solving. So when we get these medical necessity requests, I mean, truly it is problem solving. We have to determine what is the best decision that we can make based upon the information that we have. 
You know, oftentimes the clinical documentation that we get from providers isn't as clear as we would like it to be. So there are a lot of judgment calls that need to be made. So um, doing our best kind of team exercise to do that problem solving uh, really kind of ties into those principles of andragogy because that's what adults want. They want what they're learning in a classroom setting or in any setting, something that they can apply to their work today to solve a problem, um, to help them be productive at whatever it is that they're doing. And so that last one with need to know, their time is valuable. I mean, they are busy. They do not have time just to hang around. Um, they are constantly working. So for me as a facilitator, it's very important that I set the standard and they understand why they're spending their time with me. You know, how is that going to be valuable? Um, because they want to make sure that their time is being well spent. And so it's my job to make sure that need to know is always prevalent. So as we kind of have all this going together and we think about uh, those three pieces, trying to bring in Myers-Briggs and some of that standout functionality, um, part of what I'm going to utilize are scenarios that we're going to work through as a group. Now, some of these are going to be clinical based and some of them are not. So I'm going to provide an example that's non-clinical um, just because I think that would probably reflect this audience the best. So it's all about what pieces of information are you going to take to make a decision. So here's a scenario that I have. You are the manager of a grocery store, all right? And you have a, a guy come in, somebody that you know very well. Um, he comes in and you see him start walking through the aisles and he, he's putting items in his cart. Well, you know the background for this individual. His wife just died a few months ago. Um, he's got four kids and he's trying really hard to cope with everything, trying to make ends meet, and he, he's struggling. So you see him walk through the aisles, he puts items in his cart, he comes up front, goes right past the cash register and just, and right out the door. All right, so he just walks out with all those items. So you, as the store manager, have complete discretion over what you do next. So what do you do? Do you go after him? Do you go stop him? Um, given the situation, the background, do you just let him go? All right, something to mull over. So then in our session, as we're kind of talking through and everybody's bouncing around ideas, then I can throw in another little piece of information. The initial description, I didn't tell you what he had in his cart. I just said that he was placing items in his cart. What if those items were beer and cigarettes? Would that change your decision? Maybe, maybe not. And so it's these types of scenarios, both clinical and non-clinical, that help kind of bring um, all this information together to have a very productive discussion. Uh, and that's really what I'm after. Obviously, with the nurses, I'm going to have some clinical examples that will be applicable, and I'm really hoping I can kind of get that out of the nurses to share some of their examples as well. Um, so that's just one. I could keep going on forever, but I, I know we do have a time limit here. So uh, just to kind of summarize it, I'm just making sure that I am tying into the experience that's in the room because we're going to have so much to build off of. Um, I want to use that to make sure everybody is getting value from that knowledge, from that history, to apply it to today's world and solve those problems and know that their time is well spent. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, I'm going to be posting my paper here. Oh, here shortly. I want to just kind of scroll through and make sure my APA is what it needs to be. But, um, you know, hopefully this is intriguing to you. And if you have questions or want to share some feedback, I would love to hear it. Thanks, everybody.